Well, Vince, obviously Shawn Michaels has been asked this question before, but, but Shawn, let me ask you, will you put your entire career on the line just to get even with Brett the Hitman Hart? You know, I don't know how many times I have to address this. There is nothing between Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels. Anything that was once there was settled last year at WrestleMania when I beat him. I am here to be an impartial, unbiased, fair referee. And nothing, nothing will get past the keen eye of Shawn Michaels. You know what I mean? I'm serious. August 3rd, 1997, in Canada, Finger 11 released their debut album. Harrison Ford tells a terrorist to get the fuck off his damn plane in Air Force One. And in the WWF, things are just not looking really good on the injury front. This is WF SummerSlam 1997, heart and fucking soul. We are the Federation. I'm Tyler Fudge. And I'm Travis Fudge. And this is episode 186, WF SummerSlam 1997. You can follow us on Twitter at the Federation. You can follow Travis on Twitter. At Fudge and Up. Facebook and Instagram is the Federation Podcast. T-shirts at watermaneuver.net. And you can become a member of the Fudge family by joining our Patreon or becoming a uh, donator to our PayPal, which is the Federation Podcast at gmail.com. Just like Too Sweet to Be Sour, Savage Fudge from the Musically Inclined. From the musically inclined side of the family, Wooly Fudge, Fudge, a brother from another mother, Scotty Fudge, and he wants to call father, but not for a dollar, Trox Fudge. And not to forget either the dazzling Finger 11 cover at the beginning of the show by Mitch Woolridge, Wooly Fudge. You can find him and all of his music at soundcloud.com slash Woolridge Audio. So Travis, how are you? I really hope I recorded all that. I did, so okay, we're good. Yeah, good. We're good. good. We're good. It wouldn't have been the only thing that you forgot today. Yeah, 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 I wish. Uh, Tyler is um, going full <laughs> on uh, Mr. Kennedy over here. I am. I Except am just, we should have gotten it draping from the from ceiling. From the ceiling, yeah, it would have worked. Somehow we could have gotten someone to do a little pulley action to to send the, the microphone down <laughs> for no oh, no visual audience whatsoever. <laughs> Fudge. Fudge. There you go. Yeah. No, my arm's already tired. Uh, I forgot my uh, mounting bracket for uh, the mic, and now I'm just holding it like a dumbass in my hands because uh, it's a good enough mic that it's not picking up the sound that my hands make on the mic. So thank God for that. But, Travis, are you having a better day than me? Yeah, uh, <laughs> uh, sure, I guess. That's I good. Know. That's good. I'm glad. I'm glad I'm the only one another having day, shit Another day, another dollar, right? There you go, man. Another day, another 50 cents. Uh, but Travis, we might. I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> Get <Getting> gypped. <laughs> but anyways, we might as well uh, just dive right into the news here. Uh, I mean, I don't have anything else to say to you. Never. No. Never. I. I my name's Travis. I never have anything. I w- if no one ever asked me anything, I'd never say anything. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Travis, last week while we were doing our Hardcore Heaven 97 episode, I mentioned to you about a WWF uh, pay-per-view having an ECW match on it, which being SummerSlam, and how it got kiboshed. Mm -hmm. Uh, So the match was supposed to be involving Jerry Lawler or Sabu with Rob Van Dam taking on Sandman and Tommy Dreamer. So that was the match that was supposed to, it wasn't officially on the card but it was talked about being done, and then ultimately, as the ECW WWF, uh, you know, partnership fill, fizzles away, so does this match. I would have taken that over the DOA taking on the Los Bariquas. Yeah, that match was hot fucking garbage, absolute fucking garbage. Uh, but uh, there was also at this time uh, word going around that maybe, just maybe the ECW match might take place on Ground Zero. But that also does not happen. It does not. No. 
No. Uh, Paul Heyman also claims that the WWF has discussed him doing an ECW match at SummerSlam, like I just said. Uh, but uh, they uh, they also say that Heyman is also close to co-hosting Shotgun Saturday Night and uh, much, much more, really. But none of it would ever come true other than the fact that, you know, Vince would give him money. Yeah. Yeah. And does he proceed to keep on giving him money at this point? Like, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty sure, like, just, I don't know if it would happen yet, but I know Eventually that, they get the TV deal, so they're less inclined to need Yeah, money. but I think the Vince was still sending them money when, they like, just because he was taking his talent so much, right? Just as a make piece. Yeah, and, and that, you know, Al Snow's there, and yeah. it's not like Al Snow's out of the WWF. Um, oh, no. He's no. going to stay there. Well, he's been released. Okay, well, he, he, goes, a he goes ago. back. Yeah. And, I mean, Draws goes there at yeah. some point. Yeah, that's true. And I'm sure that he was under some dirty deal or they were like, oh, go to ECW first and then we'll sign you. But I, I don't I don't know. I don't know. It wouldn't surprise me if he was giving ECW money in 98. But after, after that, I'm kind of less inclined to believe that he was still sending money to them. Yeah, I mean... I, I don't know exactly how it goes, but as far as I know, WWF was giving him money for years. I years just don't. I don't know the fact. I'm just yeah taking a wild guess, just with everything that was going on around 1999, where they had the TV deal from TNN and that, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, uh, the in your house concept has been officially dropped effective immediately. WWF will go uh, monthly at nearly three hour shows at a 29.95 price tag, which will start at. The September 7th pay-per-view. They don't drop the In Your House name, though. Well, they say they do. That's fair, because <laughs> Ground Zero has yeah. the house. Yeah, I don't know I don't know what to tell you, but uh, that's that's the word from the uh, the melts in um, uh, August of 1997. So The last technical In Your House? Is DX. No. No? No. Backlash 99. What? Yeah, every B pay-per-view... In certain markets, was still labeled in your house. Really? But they'd never acknowledge it. But they would. Ground Zero is a three-hour show, though, right? Yes, it's so, the first yeah. uh, three-hour show. Yeah. It's the last WF show to feature the house setup. Yeah. Now, that that is one thing, that's yeah. for sure, because um, Bad Blood, I don't think, has it. No. And going forward after that, they never go back to it. Yeah. Well, if, uh, I mean... We'll we'll see going forward if uh, how many more have the in your house moniker, but, but I know DX doesn't have the house. No, no bad blood doesn't either. No. So I think it starts at bad. No blood. way out. No know. way out of Texas. Yeah. I know no way out of Texas is not can is doesn't have the in your house logo. No, I know that. No, so I don't think most of them do. But if if you were to ever look up in your house online. Yeah, these shows go up to Backlash ninety nine. Hmm. Yeah, it's weird because Backlash ninety nine definitely does not have any in your house logo. Oh, uh, ni- no! In ninety eight, none of it. I'm pretty yeah. sure. Either way, either fucking way, uh, the two uh, the easy shows are gone. I mean, now mind you, those hour forty five minute shows, whether they're hour forty five minutes or three hours long, it's still. They're not at packed enough to be easy watches anyways, even for only being an hour and 45 minutes. Yeah, I agree. There is some uh, some some hard times while watching. You expect an easy day, but it turns out it's not. No. Uh, we uh, were watching some episodes of Raw, and we were surprised to still see Sid. Mm-hmm. So here's some, uh, some news about Sid, Travis. Sid would collapse backstage at a Raw and would have to be rushed to the hospital. Uh, They believe that he had an anxiety attack at tapings. Uh, So uh, he told friends, though, that he was having a heart attack. Sid was also fired by the WWF uh, in almost mind bog. uh, Just how easily they let him go for being a quote unquote star. Uh, They uh, they felt, though, that they had no other choice but to fire him because they didn't believe his stories either for being injured. Uh, But also. He was scheduled to undergo surgery to fuse his neck. So maybe he was injured. He he would definitely come back and then leave 
and never be back for more than two weeks. So, I mean, like he is fired at this point in time. Yeah, going yeah. up, the, going into SummerSlam, he is not coming back. I'm one of the Raws leading up to SummerSlam. That's a hot line catch. Is will have we seen Sid's last appearance? Oh, really? Yeah. And that answer would be yes. It, yeah, yeah. Tyler, I have a correction here. The last in your house is actually St. Valentine's Day Massacre. So February oh, of okay. okay. That's when they stopped. So they've 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 stopped. When they actually had pay per views that would repeat themselves year yeah. after year, aka backlash. Yeah. Then I guess that's when Now they're happened. they're still they're not the in your house per se pay per views. It's just still under the banner in your house. Yeah. It's yeah. They wouldn't advertise it as being in your house. Even on Wikipedia, it's Let's say, for example, Unforgiven, semicolon, yeah. in your house. Over the Edge, semicolon, in your house. Okay. It's not so in it's, your house. It, over to the me, edge. That's, it's probably not. Like, it's, but I it's don't not know in why. your house. It might be. It might be like on satellite or something like that. It might have been still called in your house. But I don't know. If there's no logo of in your house, to me, it's not in your house. It's just the branding. You know? Yeah. Yeah, if it's not branded that way, then it's obviously not technically that. But okay, this- okay. So sorry, I'm sorry, Tyler. So when they advertise the shows, yeah. public like locally, apparently that would be where they'd call it in your house. And when the advertising came out for Backlash '99, it was quietly dropped. Oh, okay. So yeah, yeah. that puts so. a cap in that. So yeah, in your house is done. <laughs> if the only way you pull it, pull it is the same places that you're hyping your house shows, it's done. <laughs> I just wanted to get get a conclusion. That's all. I'm sorry. Uh, but uh, something else has disappeared too. I'll give you a guess. Ahmed Johnson, Jim Neidhart. Really, he's gone. He's he's not fired. He's disappeared. <laughs> Jim, uh, so basically he had signed an exclusive contract with uh, UCW, which is a company out of Deer Park, New York, and the WDF was not aware of that. Uh, but uh, when they were told about it, the the contract, they warned Neidhart to leave out of the deal uh, before they'll put him back in the mix, and he's just never come back. So he's just, he's gone. Like, he's not disappeared like his wife can't find him young natty doesn't know where he is <laughs> right it's not that just uh, no show yeah he's probably just you know playing fucking checkers with tj man and he was worried about brett fucking over his chance in the wf when he threw a fist <laughs> to sean <laughs> well, i mean he uh he would leave in november so yep yep along with what bulldog and rude that's about it Really? And I think Mankind would know a show. Well, the would, first straw. Yeah. Mankind is too nice for the fucking... He's too nice to walk out. Yeah, he's not going to walk out. He'll never walk out. But that's all the news I have for this. Uh, I mean, do you have anything else you want to say before we get into the show? I think uh, the show itself <laughs> has enough to talk about. It's a. It's one of the, uh, I'd say, bigger shows that we've watched. I mean, it's, it's, it's big. I mean, I wouldn't say I'm not going to say it's great. But no, there's not one match that stands out in my opinion. That's my thoughts. I enjoyed every match, except for DOA versus the Briefs. I was going to say, I was going to say, don't go. Uh, you you might get hot at me, but I did not enjoy Goldust and Marlene. Uh, Goldust and Pillman. Oh, oh, yeah, no, <laughs> it's a, it's not a good match. No, it's not a good match. Actually, yeah, no, Pillman and Goldust was actually not good because, yeah. You know, just watching Pillman. It's Pillman, hard, you, you just tell Pillman is just not able to work. And when he does something crazy, yeah. It, well, it's very simple, but what he what he's doing to his body is crazy doing that shit. So, instead of talking in hyperboles and vagueness about what Pillman may have done, let's get the fuck into this show. Let's get the fuck into this. This is SummerSlam 1997, Heart of Soul. From East Rutherford, New Jersey, Continental Airlines Arena, and there's 20,213 people in attendance. Shoot. Just like they announced. Huge crowd. Big crowd. crowd. Big crowd. Uh, 17,361 paid 
for uh, a total gate of $523,154 and uh, did $202,000 in merch sales. The pay-per-view buy rate, 0.8. Now, Travis, Mm. what is that going to equate in 1997 pay-per-view buys? (laughs) 241,000. <laughs> 235. Yeah. So it's not bad. Now, Travis, I want you to take a look at this. In 1996, SummerSlam did 157,000 buys, right? So, you know, not a big show. Wasn't a lot of great matches on it. We reviewed it. It's on, I can't remember anything on it. Uh, Vader, Vader, Vader and Shawn Michaels. Vader, Sean. Yes, and when fucking The Shawn ballroom Shawn brawl was the only good thing on the show. Yep. In 1998. Oh, yeah, the highway to hell. That's a huge summer slam. 700,000 yeah. pay per view <laughs> buys. Isn't that what fucking nuts? What the nothing? fuck, man? Like, what a jump. That's Chris awesome. Cross will make you. It's awesome. Jump, jump. It's unreal. It's unreal. Uh, the, the SummerSlam advance, actually, for this year uh, was uh, 14,000 tickets sold. And uh, yeah, so that's a strong, yeah, strong advance, is. and the fact that they actually sold seventeen thousand tickets. But this yeah. is also their first show in New Jersey since nineteen ninety, nineteen ninety one years or something like that. Maybe not I think it's ten. Oh, I okay. think it's ten. Yeah, that's huge, though. I mean, I'm sure yes. that they've wanted local wrestling, especially so close to New York. That's a far. I'm I'm, I'm sure it's still a shitty traveling distance go from east rutherford to <laughs> madison square garden right yeah i'm sure it's not a great drive <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> go through the turnpike and all that kind of shit yes but travis you know what time it is it's uh vader time pop quiz time mm. i tried to hold the mic away from my mouth but i don't know how well it did travis I apologize to everybody out there in the land when I forgot to actually ask questions last week. Um, I'm not going to make up for that this week. I just have two questions. Uh, Who was originally cast to play the president in Air Force One? (laughs) Was it Kevin Bacon, Harrison Ford, Kevin Costner, or Morgan Freeman? I know nothing about this movie. I've never. Do you know who plays the president? Can you remember from the intro? Pretty sure you said Kevin Costner. That who I play? Who plays it in the movie? Yeah, it's Harrison Ford. Harrison Ford, same same person. (laughs) So basically, was he originally slated to play it the whole time, or was it one of the other three? Same Morgan Freeman. Morgan Freeman. So you actually think in 1997 America was ready to pretend there was a black president? Sure, 24 (laughs) had it in 2001. Whatever. 2001. (laughs) <laughs> before 9-11 <laughs> fuck you Travis the answer is Kevin Costner yeah well whatever Kevin Costner better known for you know his roles in Waterworld or I think he actually become he does become the president in the movie I think he does yeah where his daughter convinces him to run for president or run for governor or something and see I was half right so you, you, you're close yeah. you're close you're lucky I didn't say Kevin Bacon Kevin Bacon, you know Kevin Bacon. Nobody would hire Kevin Bacon to be a president. He had one Look good movie. He had one good movie. Footloose. No, no, <laughs> no. Of Echoes. No, he had an he had an action movie back in like 2010, 2011. It was good. It was good. Oh, I mean, I was a big fan of Stir of Echoes. Yeah, I'm not an action movie person. I, not, I don't, I don't know if I've movie. ever seen a, Ke- a Kevin movie. Costner movie before. Kevin Costner or Kevin Bacon? Kevin Costner. Kevin Costner. He's in a lot of feel good romps. He's, He's a, Robin he, Hood. Does he feel the dreams, dude? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Robin Hood. No. No? Oh, you should watch that. Yeah. Kevin Costner's Robin Hood. Brian Adams. Everything I do, oh, I do it for you. Can you stop that? Because you've got the mic held like you're singing the song. Because like <laughs> I am. So, so you're uh, <laughs> you're, uh, you're crossovering I am. into a new niche over here i am i am the niche i am all the niches travis SummerSlam starts off with a long boring intro 
Well, they needed to set up Big Blue, man. They had to set up Big Blue. Oh, the cage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's true, which would lead us to the first match of the night when it's obvious why it's the first match of the night because it's, the e- it's easier to take it down than it is to set it up. Can't have uh, it as a main event. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. I mean, they would do it in years prior or years past. Not for Mankind and Triple H, No, though. no. So, like Travis said, this is Mankind Triple H. Um, I myself am not the biggest fan of cage matches, so I might be the wrong person to ask, but I thought the first half of this match was shit, honestly. I, did, I didn't mind the match. I didn't either. The first half, though, was boring me to tears. I like matches in Big Blue a little more because Big Blue looks like it hurts a lot more than the fine yeah, mesh steel cage. So when someone gets thrown into Big Blue, you can hear all of the fucking greasy ass thudding noises because they haven't upgraded that cage since 1986 and you know that they had no idea hd televisions were coming because they hadn't even painted that cocksucker in like four years rusty and shit man (laughs) i was was gonna say something about it but i figured it would just be totally out 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 of the whole topic but yeah it's rusty as shit man it's worn down looking and everything like that i thought china's uh interference was okay. I didn't yeah. mind that. Yeah. Because it big, had its place. big Blue's got big gaps. Big Blue's got big gaps. <laughs> um, I actually, I didn't mind Triple H getting his foot caught in uh, between the middle and top rope, yeah. which uh, allowed Mankind to head for the door, which is the heel way out, I might add. Uh, when China clobbers him with the cage door, I mean, that's... Oh, that was terrible. Uh, rough. Whoo. Yeah, it looked like it hurt. Uh, China would then climb up the cage, throw a chair in after attacking the ref. Uh, even though uh, there was a perfectly fine door open for her to just slide the chair into it, she had to climb the cage to do so. Uh, but this is all because uh, Mankind would end up dropping Triple H headfirst onto the chair and then catapult him into China, who is on the cage. And it would fall to the ground, which there's your excuse as to why she climbed the cage. Because it's a spot, brother. Can't ruin the spot. Uh, yeah, no, there's, I mean. I like Mankind tying Triple H to the Tree of Woe by suplexing him onto the steel cage. <laughs> Did that? Is that how he got it there? Yes. He <laughs> suplexed him into the cage and then his, his feet latched yeah. on around the cage. Oh. And he was just tied to the Tree of Woe. Fucking like, A. You know, Mick, Mick doing that with the elbow a lot and stuff like that yeah. in the corner. Originally, I thought that that was an interesting spot. <laughs> Did you say interesting or uninteresting? Interesting. Okay. And it interesting. Like you said, but I probably said uninteresting spot. Yeah. yeah. yeah definitely. <laughs> I like Jimmy Corderas. Every time that China was interfering with the match, he'd just say, Come on, stop. <laughs> stop. Come on. I did not hit her. I did not. <laughs> Uh, Mankind would then hit a DDT onto the chair, and uh, he's all the way out of the cage. When he takes off his mask, uh, hits an elbow drop onto the t- off of the top of the cage, and then Mankind would uh, begin his climb once again while being chased by China. Dra- or sh- Sorry, she's not being chased by China, but at the same time, China's dragging Hunter over to the door, and Mankind's feet would touch the floor first, and he would win. And uh, we would get the uh, the the real highlight of this match, and that's when Mankind is lit on the floor, and Dude loves music plays, and his feet just starts tapping, and despite all of his pain, he gets up, and that motherfucker dances, and he finds the first guy that's dressed like Dude Love, and he gives him a sloppy, sweaty hug. <laughs> this is definitely pre-Corona, pre-COVID. Yeah. Oh, the weird shit you see. Um. So. It's weird because we have seen Dude Love more on Raw on a regular basis in the past yes. month than we've seen Mankind. Yeah. So it, now that I've watched all the Raws, it makes me wonder, why is Dude Love not wrestling Hunter on this show? But they're they're going full on with well, this. Well, Dude Love the, would end up wrestling Hunter, right? Because I'm pretty sure when I played one of those 2K16, I think it's 2K13 when they had the Attitude Era thing or wwe 13 pretty sure dude love and triple h was one of the matches i had to do might have been on a raw maybe maybe 
who knows? Or it could have been on Bad Blood. Either way, I just I don't know. They're I guess they're going into this the multiple personality gimmick, so yeah. that's why he's doing the mankind. Then he switches to do love post match. Yeah. 